Good afternoon. My name is Peter Dodds. I'm a volunteer with St John Ambulance in Preston. My role is that of trainer and assessor for first aid and other subjects. This afternoon we're going to demonstrate briefly how to deal with a collapsed casualty who you might find at home, in the street or at your place of work. We've got a casualty on the floor over here that I will now go and deal with. Okay. Hello, I found this man on the floor. Hello Les, can you hear me? Les, can you hear me? I'm looking round to make sure that there's no danger before I get involved. I can't see why Les is on the floor here. Help! Help! I'm shouting for help, so if anybody can come and help me, they will be here. The first most important thing to do is to check that Les is breathing and his airway is clear. Tipping his head back gently, opening his mouth, nothing in his mouth. I'm checking that he's breathing. I can see his chest rising, so he's breathing. We're doing well, Les, you're still breathing, but I need to check him here to see if there's anything wrong. Checking his arms to see whether there's any blood or deformity or misshaping. There's nothing there. Nothing on the chest is obvious. Checking your legs, move, making it sure there's no damage there. Putting your leg out straight. And your other leg's okay. This arm, I'm just going to move out, Les, so I can turn you over. Bring this arm up across to protect his face when I turn him. You okay there, Les? Not if you can hear me. I'm checking his pockets so I don't hurt him if there's anything in his pockets. And he's taking all his money out because he knows I'm poor. And we're now going to roll you over with this leg. Here we come, Les. Protecting his head and face with my hand and his hand. Moving my hand from that, tipping his head back and checking that he's still breathing. He's still breathing. He's in a stable position. His leg is in a position to stop him rolling. When he rolled towards me, he came onto my knees so he didn't go flat on his face. I can now check his back, the rest of his body, and there's still no injury. Help! I'm still shouting for help in case anybody can arrive. Nobody's arriving. I'm satisfied he's safe there. So I can now get up. Les, I'm just going to dial 999. You'll be right there, mate. And go off and dial 999. Having dealt with an unconscious casualty who had no obvious injuries but was breathing and we put in a position of safety and comfort to send for the ambulance to take him away, we're now going to move on to deal with something that people might find more often in the home and that would be a severe cut with severe bleeding. I'm just going to go across here and find my colleague. Oh, oh. Oh dear, Carla, oh, what, so what's happened? Oh, I've cut my arm. Right. I was cutting up some boxes. Okay, oh, right. Dear. And you're, you're feeling a bit faint, aren't you? Can oh, you put your hand on there and put some well. direct pressure on it? Put it right up in the air, and I would like you to sit down on the floor the easiest way you can. That was my knee. Oh. I think it might be easier if you lay right down, Carla, because this oh. tends to make you feel very faint. Okay, you all right there? Yes. You keep your arm up in the air. Oh. You haven't hurt your legs or anywhere else, no. have you? Because you're feeling faint and dizzy, I'm going to put your legs up on the chair. Okay, we'll oh, put this chair. I think you'll be okay with this chair. It's got a bit of padding on. I'm just going to lift your legs up. Are you okay there? Is that comfortable? You feel safe there? I'm going to get a first aid kit because I need a dressing to uh, stop the bleeding that Carla's suffering from. I've got to go around Carla because it's not uh, safe to step over her in case that cause any injuries by jumping on her leg or anything. And at this point I would have shouted for help, in case my friend Les is about the place. And I would have gloves on in order to protect myself and Carol from any infection or blood-based problems. Carol, I'm just going to put a dressing... Hello, Pete. Oh, we've got a problem. I can't spoke in for you. Can you go and get an ambulance, please? Yes. 999 to right. this address, 79 yeah. Garth Dang Road, Preston. Give them the postcode and the phone number. We've got a lady with a severe bleed who's going into shock. Right. Okay, then you come back and tell me. All right, Pete. Okay, thanks. Do it now. Okay, so we've got Carol with this significant wound. It's a knife cut, so it's clean edged, and we know there's no glass or foreign bodies in it. That would cause us problems. And the best way to control this in the short term is for Carol to put direct pressure, i.e., the palm of her hands, over the wound and to keep it elevated. That makes it elevated, makes it hard work get a little bit harder to pump the blood out so it relaxes and it doesn't happen to much. I'm going to cover it with a dressing to provide some pressure to help the bleeding become controlled and also to stop any dirt, muck or other things get into it that would cause further harm. We use the clean, non-fluffy side of the dressing and pad. Carol, could you move your hand out of the way, please, for a moment? Put it on and Carol can help by holding it in position while I bandage it up. 
and the bayonet needs to be firm enough to control the bleeding, put quite a bit of pressure on. Carol will soon tell me if it's uh, too tight to become uncomfortable, won't you, Carol? Yes. And it's not. No, it's and, fine. And we're supposed to use reef nuts to, for this, but for these elasticated bandages and things, uh, they tend to stay much more secure than the old-fashioned bandages that slipped. Now, having got that in position, we don't want Carol sat with her arm up in the air because it's a bit tiring. It's not very comfortable. So we're going to support it with a triangular bandage. The important thing is to get the arm in the correct position straight away so you're not having to move it more than necessary. Your legs are still okay up there, Carol? Yes, fine, thank you. I know you're feeling a bit cool, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll get the blanket on you as soon as we've put this uh, sling on. And with this sling, the point goes to the elbow, the, the arm of the leg of the sling goes up there, and the idea is to provide quite a bit of support to the weight of Carol's arm, and we use that by tucking it under there. Yeah, and it goes behind her head. Can you put the blanket over Carol's legs and her uh, lower body just to keep it warm? Okay. We're putting the sling on, and this is one of these Hollywood paper ones. It's very gentle, Carol. Okay. Oh, that's better. That's better, and we've got the weight of your arm supported. Now, this might seem like it's a lot of activity to do, but because it's not a, uh, a terribly urgent called for the ambulance service to come. It's not the priority it would be given to say a heart attack or someone not breathing. We need to be prepared to stay with Carol for maybe 10 or 15 minutes so she needs to have her arm comfortable. Keep her warm. Your feet are okay up there, yes, Carol? Fine. I can't give you a drink because I'm not sure what they'll do when you get to the hospital. Right. So we'll just dab your mouth with uh, ice cubes or water yeah. and I'll stay there. Is there anybody we can ring to say, because Tony will be worried about you coming home and not getting his tea, yes. won't you? So I'll get your phone number and I'll ring uh, Tony and say you're going to the Royal Crescent Hospital. Okay. But it'll be okay. Thank you. And I'll get Les to take your car home. Thank you. And thank you for watching this uh, video produced by the Lancashire Evening Post in association with St John Ambulance, Preston. We hope that uh, the two demonstrations have shown you how to respond to two fairly common situations. Uh, the first one being someone who you might find collapsed with no apparent cause. It's important then to check their breathing protect their breathing and put them into a position of safety whilst they're waiting for professional help via the 999 service. The second casualty with the, the arm injury is something that could happen at any part of the body. It happens at DIY weekends, mothers opening tins of food, kids playing and all sorts. So the, the message there is get the, the casualty into a position of safety, put direct pressure on the wound if it's safe to do so, meaning that there's no uh, foreign bodies in the wound applying a pad and bandage quite firmly and securing the arm or the leg uh, with a sling or however appropriately to prevent further movement and sending for uh, the 999 services to come and uh, deal with the situation from there. Uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues Carol with the cut and Les with the, the lying down for their help this afternoon. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you wish to get further information concerning first aid courses within Lancashire, you can contact St John Ambulance County Headquarters at Preston number 01772 252239 and our highly trained staff here will give you information about any of the first aid courses and how they might meet your needs. Thank you.